Hello, Sofa Squad. It's Paul from Reporting Live from my sofa. How is everyone doing? I hope you all had a great weekend. You're probably going to see this sometime late Sunday night. And because that's basically when I'm filming it. Uh, I wanted to go over very quickly day six. You know, they were going to have court session on Saturday. And I was just like, you know, oh my gosh. You know, are you kidding me? I've got family in town, the whole nine yards. But luckily when I went to go watch it, I was like, oh, this is a pleasant surprise. It was hardly any time at all. I even questioned if I wanted to even bother with it. But of course I did. So without further ado... Let's review. Okay, so there's really only a couple of things that took place in this day. That is Craig Miller and Mr. Armstrong, the ranger. He can't stay away from this courtroom, y'all. I don't think it's my choice, but you know what I'm saying. So the first person they had up there was Craig Miller. And he's a paid-for witness. Let's just go ahead and put that out there. Y'all know if you've watched me for a while, you know how I feel about that. So, I, I mean, I'm biased towards it. I can't help it. Uh, but just for reasons, you know, and I don't care if it's the state, the defense, whoever paid for witnesses, I have a bias towards. Uh, the only kind that I don't have a bias towards are ones that it is included in their job description as well as salary that they have to testify. So, essentially, if they get asked a question, how much do you get paid for this, their only answer could be, well, I guess we could break down my salary per day and hour you know, but it's not a, oh, I charge $10,000 a minute to be here speaking. It's just, it's their job requirement. So that I can get. Because I've seen some people, uh, cough, cough, Tim Jones Jr. trial, who that was a situation, and they were perfect. They were not biased, and they got there and just told the truth. And it, of course, wasn't very good for him. So in this one, Craig Miller is up here, and, you know, he's like an expert police use of force person for civil rights cases and things like this. You know, he worked for the police in Dallas for 30 years. Um, so, so there's that. You know, I mean, he definitely has some very good experience there. Uh, now, what he's saying that he has done is he, as first of all, he's looking at the totality of the situation and he is mostly focused on the period of time that she is in the doorway. And, and he's talking about what was basically going on with her you know, during this time of the interaction, you know, with uh, Bodum and her. So, he, the main point of his, his testimony that he brings up is what is called, like, inattentional blindness. And it's basically where a cop is so focused on, like, the target that they don't see anything around them. And what he's saying also is that this usually happens, like, they're focused on the hands or the weapon. Because the hands are you know, usually the thing holding the weapon. And so he's going into that. And, you know, and that's what Ranger Armstrong will talk about, too, is her tunnel vision and things like that. So he's talking about that. Um... He, again, is another one that thinks her use of deadly force was reasonable. And this goes on and on, you know, for a little bit. He's talking about this stuff. So then the state gets up there. It, well, the state questions him. And, you know, they're like, you believe Amber... Gar they're like, there's two things going on here. The state's very good at saying there's two things going on here with these people. He's like, you believe Amber Geiger was reasonable. And he's like, you believe Amber Geiger believes she had to use deadly force. And... Uh, basically they just kind of tear them apart because essentially this is the thing that they keep producing with these witnesses the defense or when you get up there and you get into the realm of what's well, my belief that she believed I, I mean don't even waste our time i don't care if you're the state the defense or whoever we don't want to know what you think they think we just we can't let's we can't deal with that you know i'm sure you've done some good studies i'm sure you did your homework good in school yada 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 that's fine but especially for case, I mean, any case really, but something like this, I mean, this is a very slippery slope here. No, we don't need to go based on, you know, well, you know, one time in a dusty college room, we did this study and it told us this. So there is that. But so essentially the end result of his testimony and, you know, the state going back over all this stuff is the judge was basically like, he can't testify what he, he cannot testify to what he thought Amber did or did not, like, feel. Um, 
you know, there's no testimony about the use of deadly uh, or uh, deadly force being reasonable. And, you know, all this is done outside the jury. And so, and I agree with this because, again, just like I said, to get up there and to testify in a case this serious and to be like, and you to be up there trying to talk about, well, I believe this is what she believed. I mean, this just, again, don't even waste our time. Now, he can talk about, in a general sense, the inattentional blindness. Uh, you know, he can talk about that, but not like, well, I really feel that Amber felt. You, you see where I'm going with this? So, and again, there's that. So, basically, what I'm understanding is that, and then Armstrong, so I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. So then Armstrong got up there, and he was not up there very long, y'all. I mean, the biggest thing was he was, like, talking about tunnel vision. Almost the same type of stuff. And remember, he's up there. He was having the same type of stuff of, well, no, I don't believe there's any cause for, you know, uh, um, basically, he doesn't even think they should even be in court at this point. You know, but reasonable for, but deadly force was, you know, good and this, that, and the other. So the judge is basically striking all this down with anybody and anything because it's almost like, you can't get up here and talk about, you know, I'm pretty sure this is what she was thinking. I mean, it's just, no. So essentially what I'm understanding, these were the only two people that came up there. They sent the jury home and that was it. So they weren't even up there. I think it was like two hours maybe that, you know, the public saw. And it sounds like Monday, tomorrow, they are going to be able to maybe rest their case, maybe call someone else. It sounds like basically since the judge was like, look, this is how this is going to go. We're not going to use A, B, and C type stuff. The defense was almost kind of like, okay, well, I guess we don't really have anyone then, which is not a cute look because it just goes to show you, you know, what is up their sleeve. So, and I'm not trying to say she doesn't have a right to some kind of defense. I mean, everyone is guaranteed that, you know what I mean? And I get that, but there's just some things that you're just like, you know, really, I mean, this is just... No, we can't go based on, well, I think they think this, so therefore that's true. It doesn't work that way. So, um, so that was it. So Monday, it sounds like we could potentially be getting into closing arguments. Y'all, I can't wait for the closing arguments, but honestly, okay, so a lot of these cases... You know, it's like, I wouldn't want to be on the jury. I mean, this is one for sure, for obvious reasons. And then also, there's so much technical information in this case that it's just like, oh my gosh. I mean, I feel like you got to get a PhD, you know? And it's just, you know, it's easy from here, from, you know, the sofa, the chair, whatever, to make commentary on it, stuff like that, you know, whatever. But it's a whole other thing when you have to start, like, getting legal and very by the book and whatnot. So these jurors, and, you know, they've been sequestered. They don't have an easy task ahead of them. I very much feel for them. I'm sure they will make come to the right decision, hopefully, whatever that might be for them. Uh, so we'll see. So I'm crossing my fingers that Monday is going to wrap this up. I feel like the, the situation, I feel like there's not much more... I don't know what much more the defense could add to the situation, meaning testimony-wise. I, I just am not sure really what else they could add to it. The state, I feel like they have presented a very good case, and they're like, here, bam, here this is. Uh, and I feel like, honestly, I still feel like Amber being on the... I keep wanting to say being on stage. Amber being on the stand, I feel like said everything there. I mean, I feel like they could go based on her testimony alone and get her on a few of those charges, you know, because she just admitted to some of the things. So we're just going to have to see. So that's it. This is going to be a very short video. Uh, I appreciate y'all hanging out. Now, don't forget, you know, we're doing the, we're doing the podcast on Reason from Talks at Bliss and I. And we are, so we have it. You can listen to an audio. The links will be down there. You can go to the website here. Uh, or we also do some of them video-wise. So be sure and check those out. And those are just here on this channel right now. But I am going to be making a dedicated channel here for the podcast. Uh, and just to do it on there. So it'll just make it easier and kind of self-contained over there. But I will let you all know when that happens. It's not too far away. I just got to kind of pretty it up a little bit. Um, and that's it. So anyways, I hope everyone had a great weekend. I hope you all have a great week. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.